I'm uh, continuing on uh, with my research into the Jewel Ringer uh, project that uh, Laser Saber started a long time ago. A lot of people have worked on it, and it's advancing with some very smart people. Uh, there's a retired uh, PhD physics instructor involved and some uh, engineers at this point. And this name is going to stick, that Jewel Ringer. And I converted it today into a 12 volt to 110 volt AC bulb circuit. And I'm a lid motor. And this project has been worked on by many, many people. But I believe the name Jewel Ringer is going to stick. The circuit is very similar to G. Bluer's uh, Slayer Exciter. But um, that name, that Jewel Ringer name, I think is going to stick just like a Jewel Thief. And uh, that goes back to Laser Saber. So a lot of kudos to him. And then Peanut Butter uh, 291 has worked extensively on this. A lot of uh, effort goes to him. XEE2 is another one that worked a lot on the Jewel Ringer project. There's a lot of them, but uh, I can't list them all. But anyway, this is the circuit that I've now worked with here. And it is uh, using a 45 watt solar panel, 12 volt. Uh, I can go straight into the circuit or I can charge a battery and run uh, this Radio Shack transformer. And you'll notice this is not a blocking oscillator circuit. Now this transformer was used uh, by a number of people uh, earlier on using it as a blocking oscillator, but it's not wired that way right now. This is the transformer here. You get it at Radio Shack. It's the 3 amp one. Um, it's just running a 2N222 a transistor. Uh, I've changed the circuit around some uh, just to play with it. Uh, that capacitor is something I have discovered a long time ago that when you're using oscillator circuits on a solar system uh, you can smooth things out and get per better performance out of a solar panel uh, when you're running it direct. Now that battery is not connected right now. Uh, there's the voltage on the solar panel that's the solar panel out there on the patio. It's a cloudy day here in uh, Southern California. And uh, you need something that will work when it's cloudy because uh, you can't rely on direct sunlight all the time. So if you get a big enough panel of the right kind, you can operate solar stuff in, a, in the shade, which is what I've been working on. on. And uh, there's my amp draw coming into the system. Nothing. Now I've got uh, three bulbs here. I've got two... 110 volt AC and a 12 volt DC and I bought this to compare to the AC bulbs and this looks just like the AC bulbs but there's no AC guts in it. Uh, it's a 450 lumen bulb. It's a pure white light as opposed to the warm light so it's hard to use the, uh, the light meter on it. I get different readings unfortunately but let me show you what it looks like. It's very bright and you could use it straight up off of a battery if you wanted to. And you could make a 12 volt lighting system um, using just that bulb and I've looked at it at night in the dark of night and that's very very bright and just a 12 volt battery, a solar panel and that one bulb in a small room and you could uh, do most of your whatever with it. So anyway, let me hook up this right here. These are the two bulbs. One's on an extension cord, which is one of the reasons we're using uh, um, AC bulbs. Now this is not pure sine wave AC. Uh, this is a different kind of sine wave and peanut butter showed, uh, showed us what that looks like. It's more of a sawtooth or a square wave kind of thing coming out of this oscillator and I believe these bulbs have a great deal to do with why this circuit works. Um, without that AC bulb getting this to go into an oscillation just doesn't seem to work right. Some of the guys are having problems getting it to run without that AC bulb. So um, I think and peanut butter is in agreement that that circuit inside that AC bulb is contributing to why this circuit is running and why it's running so efficiently. So let me turn this on. I'll leave the battery disconnected here. I'm going to connect up the AC part of this right here. There's the AC bulbs on. And um, there is my um, panel voltage right now. And that's under load. And there's my amp draw. It's, it's about 
probably 400 milliamps at that point and that's with these toad bulbs running here and this is something else I wanted to show was uh, I can listen to it with my radio and listen to the frequency coming off these bulbs and then if I move this rheostat around which is what I'm using to control the input power you can listen to the frequency vary I'm just turning this rheostat down. Now this is a Radio Shack 25 ohm wire wound rheostat. I've used it on other projects. It gets hot. So I'm just using it here for testing. You really need a voltage regulator or something if you're going to do it this way. But it does make an interesting dimmer switch. And that's where it goes in the circuit right there. And the other thing I wanted to show is if I hook this 12 volt bulb up to the circuit here, I can run everything. If I hook the battery up to it here. And there's all the bulbs on right there. And there's my voltage. There's my amp draw. Now this is pulsing right now. Let me back one of the bulbs out and I'll get this to stay on uh, full bright. So you actually get almost as much light by just using uh, one bulb as opposed to two bulbs. But um, sometimes you want to have a light in a different part of your house or a different part of the boat. So this idea of using multiple bulbs I think is a good idea. But that's with both those bulbs running. There's my amp draw. It's just under one amp. And that's of course using the battery. Now if I back off the battery, let me take the battery off, they're still dimly lit. Now what I'm going to do is back off the AC bulb, if I can do this, and there's the 12 volt bulb. That's what it pulled the panel down to. That's with it not connected to the battery. And there's my amp rod. That's with the 12 volt bulb. And that's cranked up all the way. Now if I crank this down, the camera's not going to show this, but this goes quite a bit dimmer. That's if I move the rheostat down. So anyway, these are just uh, several things that I've noticed on this, uh, this system that we're working with, this jewel ringer system. Um, they're calling it all kinds of names now, and peanut butter is using charging circuits on this thing too. So there's all different kinds of names, there's all different kinds of people working on it. And I think I'm offending some people uh, with this. And uh, some of the other guys are, are feeling some uh, heat on this project too. I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, this is a, a fairly simple circuit. Um, I don't know who came up with this originally, or when, or how. It may go way back like the blocking oscillator to World War II. I don't know. But uh, all I know is that with these new AC bulbs that we have now, you can get some very interesting um, efficiencies out of them that I like. I like the fact that you can run this thing straight up off a solar panel on a cloudy day, hold that much voltage on it under load, and get a decent amount of light out of it. So anyway, that's the latest for today. That's the uh, the jewel ringer that runs on uh, 12 volts, bumped up to 110 volt AC light bulb. Thanks for watching.